Hello everyone, welcome back to Hotline Topics at 71. Today, Kinani is one of Nigeria's foremost cinematographer, a filmmaker, storyteller, photographer, and a producer. Tunde Kilani is popularly called TK. Tunde Kilani was born on the 26th of February 1948. He was born in Lagos, but was sent to live with his grandparents in Abokuta when he was five years old. His grandfather was a Balogun Vijayi Kukudi. Tunde Kilani, because of this, had first hand access to Yoruba culture, literature, philosophy, and world view of arts. He attended the Okio no Primary School Ikija Abokuta, then the Abokuta Grammar School for his secondary education. He actually developed an interest in photography while he was in primary school. Therefore, all through secondary school, he invested his time and money into learning photography. After secondary school, he worked as an apprentice for a photographer so he could learn more about the craft. Tuneki Lani then went on to train as a cameraman at the former Western Nigerian television, WNTV, for almost four years. After his training, he traveled to London, where he attended the London Film School for a two-year course on the art and techniques of filmmaking. Tudeke Lani's early career while at the London Film School. Tudeke Lani, while at the London Film School, Tudeke Lani worked as a correspondent for BBC TV and Reuters. At Reuters, he covered the drought at Ethiopia and also the independence of Zimbabwe. On concluding his course at the London Film School, he came back to Nigeria and co-produced his first movie, The Dilemma of Reverend Father Michael, with Adebayo Faleti. He worked as a cinematographer on most featured movies produced in Nigeria. Some of these movies are Anikura, Ogun Ajaye, Yaniwura, Taxi Driver, and Iwa. Just to mention a few. In 1990, he was the assistant director and also acted in the first American movie to be shot in Nigeria titled Mr. Johnson. The film is an adaptation of the 1939 novel by Joyce Carey. His awards and recognitions, he was the recipient of the prestigious African Real Award at the Silicon Valley African Film Festival in California, USA in 2012. Also, NMA Lifetime Achievement Award in 2014. He's also a member of Emmy Awards International Jury in 2015. African Magic's Vias Choice Awards Industry Merit Award in 2018. He was also elected to vote in the director's category of the Board of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Science, also known as the Oscars in 2019. This is just to mention a few. Tunde Kilani is the showpiece and masterpiece of Nigeria's film industry. He transcends Nollywood. It was a different universe of film production. At 71, life keeps getting lighter and brighter for him. First, he witnessed the birth of his granddaughter. Then a book about Nollywood was published in his honor. His careful choice of words will excite any designing mind, articulate in his delivery. He talks in a tone that readily affirms whatever message he's trying to put across. For a man who has many parts and a tradition of excelling in all of them, he is married and blessed with three children. Tuneki Lani does not hesitate to discuss his modest background. In an interview, Tuneki Lani talked about his childhood. In his words, when I was five, my father sent me to live with my grandparents at Abiyakuta in Ugun State. At that time, the first phase of the free primary education by the Western Nigeria government, led by the late chief Obafemi Awulowo, was about to kick off, and my father wanted me to benefit from that program. As my parents' eldest child, I went to live with my grandparents at our family compound. I started life in this new environment that was quite different from Lagos. Apparently, the experience prepared me for my later life. And I thank my father for taking that decision, he said. Having enrolled at Okiono United Primary School in 1955, he recalls that he was often poked fun at. He said, What I knew was that everybody laughed at me when I started living at Abiyokuta because I was scared of everything, including goats. I could not even go out at night and I did not even understand what the Oro Festival was all about. He says with a tinge of amusement in his voice. However, his relocation to Abokuta led to a series of events that set the tone for his career. He noted that even though he missed his mother every day, he was exposed to several things that stirred his interest in filmmaking. He said, I benefited a lot from oral tradition. It was amazing that everybody had a story to tell. They told me incredible stories about the real world and the other things. But as soon as I started schooling, I was able to read and write. I went into books and started to experience D.O. Fagunwa's books. Like Igbo Olodumare, Ugo Juode, Ninu Igbo Irumale, and so much more. Suddenly, I was just catapulted into another world and that foiled my fantasy. 
Growing up in that environment, I had the whole world as my playground, from the forest to the banana groves up to the banks of the Ogun River. I started to experience and know a lot about nature and other creatures. It was a wonderful world. A young Tudekilani pursued photography vigorously. He said, in my final year at the primary school, I had a friend whose father was a photographer and I followed him everywhere because he had a box camera with which he took some photographs. I was fascinated by this technology that enabled people to freeze moments. It blew my mind completely and I knew that it was going to be important to me in life, he said. It did not take long before Tundekilani got his first camera. He also related the episode with a feeling of triumph. As a student of the famous Abel Kuta Grammar School, I bought my first genuine camera. It was more plastic than anything else but it worked. It was a Kodak 127. I owned it for a year or two and in my second or third year, I bought a Raptor Mark II. When I got it, my enthusiasm for it waned because it was not professional in any way. It was not until my final year in secondary school that I was able to buy my first single lens reflex. It was a Halina 35. From then on, I became really excited. I had a friend in school and together we became photographers. We taught ourselves how to process films and do all the necessary photography related things. After I returned to Lagos and worked as a clerk in one or two places, I got apprenticed as a photographer, he said. His restless spirit would not let him be and again, today Kilani found himself watching a rich mix of American and Roman Italian films at cinemas in Lagos, this singular act ensured that he was inevitably drawn to the cinemas as well. He became interested in motion pictures and decided to get trained. He said, I was employed as a trainee cameraman at Western Nigeria Television. That was how I started a career in television as a cameraman. Craving the cinema experience and coupled with his insatiable quest for excellence, he saved some money and enrolled at the London Film School. He had to focus on television, which resembled a box at that time. This was quite different from the giant projectors that he was used to at the cinemas, so he wanted to tell stories using big pictures on the screen. After completing his course at the London Film School, the multiple award winning for cinematographer became an independent filmmaker and producer. He produced his first film, The Dilemma of Reverend Father Michael. It was an adaptation of Adebayo Faleti's novel. Since then, he has shot and produced several films, including Tiolu Wanile. Ayonimo Fe Koshede Oleku Shawaride White Handkerchief The Campus Queen, just to mention a few. His ability to make thought provoking films is a celebrated feat and he attributes it to his passion for excellence. He said that his films are hits because he respects the audience and his name and his reputation are all he has. There is a standard below which he cannot perform. Today, Kilani said, it takes time and consistency for an audience to trust you. So he tries within the resources available to him at any particular time to take a story and share it. He prefers to talk about his career highlights as he believes that every film of his is a breakthrough movie. For this amazing filmmaker and other storytellers, technology has really given them the ability to have a body of works. Tudoki Lani pointed out that if you look at his work, Tiolu Wanile and Dazzling Mirage, you will see quite a lot of progression in terms of technology, technique and content. From his body of work, you can see that all his films are meaningful, not just entertainment films. All of them, including Mami and Dazzling Mirage, have strong positive female characters because it is important to him that African women should be given their rightful place in the community. Today, Kilani is also the CEO of Mayframe Productions. Comparing the industry then and now, he said, if you start to look at the cinema then and now, it has to be a great job. Certainly, the technology has changed. Previously, the technology was boring because every material that was needed to make a film was imported. And after the film had been made, we had to ship everything back to America or England for processing and final post-production. Today, technology has made it easy because alternative means of making motion pictures by video or digital filmmaking has taken over. This means that the films are much more independent and there's a lot of diversity in the industry. Becoming this successful though has not come easy for him. According to him, he has had to make some sacrifices. In his words, to be able to be successful in any way, I've had to sacrifice so much and my immediate family have had to bear the brunt. From my wife at Dayton to the children, we denied ourselves so many things, he said. 
What career highlights that he's particularly proud of is the main film film and festival institute at Bokuta. One of the ways he unwinds is true reading. He believes the secret to creative filmmaking is in books. That is why he tells young people to read as much as they can. There are still tons of books that Tudeki Lani wants to read and adapt into the cinema. We have come to the end of this episode on this amazing filmmaker that has actually made a lot of blockbusters. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for our daily content. And until next time, remain blessed. And Happy New Year to everyone.